So the news came out. We're switching to PC, but this doesn't mean you have to switch to PC. You can still play on your PS4 if you want. You can still get a PS5 if you want. You can still get the new Xbox if you want. You can still play on your Xbox One if you want. But what I'm gonna recommend to you is getting into the PC game. And obviously it is going to be controller mandated. I personally have an Astro C40 controller. I'm gonna recommend that. And I'm gonna make a video about it specifically about competitive Call of Duty because I don't see any other videos about that. Uh, and I think that this is a great controller to go with right now like i said you do not have to switch to pc but it is going to give you that upper hand and quite honestly in call of duty every millisecond counts so especially when the monitors were the big deal and the routers are a big deal the computer is going to be just as big of a deal so i don't know jack diddly shit about computers so please if you do know more than me please Correct me down in the comment section below. But I did my research, I watched a bunch of videos, I consulted with a couple of people, and this is what I came up with for a budget build, and then what's going to allow you to stream as well as, you know, if you wanna edit that content at whatever quality that you want, as well as you're gonna be able to play at the highest quality possible, which is obviously the biggest factor. Alright, so right here on screen, I have the minimum and recommended required specs that you've seen going around everywhere. It's linked directly with the Call of Duty. Um, it's literally the very first thing that you search up. But the minimum, obviously, is an i3 or an FX 6300, GeForce 670, uh, Radeon you know, 790, you know, you see all these things. 8 gigs of RAM. That's the minimum requirement. This is the maximum. Intel Core i5, Ryzen 5 1600, GeForce 970, Radeon R9 390, 580, you know, 12 gigs, 175 gigs, so you know, it's, it's all right here ahead of you. All you kind of got to do is check on this site, see, can you run it? When the game comes out, you know, you just go right here, download this, and it'll show you if you can run the thing. Here's the thing that's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be for the competitive play. Intel i7. That means it's going to be a lot more in the competitive use. And it's going to obviously require this to reach the max stats that you want to get, whatever. So we want to go with something along these lines. GeForce 1080 or Super 2070. 16 gigs of RAM. 175 and DirectX. The DirectX is very important because it's going to be sound and sound is a very big thing in Cold War. So let me give you a budget build and like I said I personally do not know the absolute most about computers so if you know a better combination better bang for your buck please let me know down in the comment section below and if you guys are curious if there was a better combination found I will have all the best combinations pinned in the top comment so make sure you check down there if you are curious but as of right now after like i said consulting with a couple people we have an intel core i5 6600 3.5 gigahertz quad core uh processor coming in at 193 dollars cooler master fan to make it look pretty that's coming in at 44 you know a normal fan is going to be a little bit cheaper but Come on, man. It's 44 bucks to spend a fan. If you're getting a job, you know, this isn't going to hurt you. And then we got a pretty cheap motherboard. I personally have B450 Tomahawk Max, but this AS Rock is probably going to get the job done. Like I said, $67. So next for your RAM, we have Corsair Vengeance 16 gigabytes. It's going to be two 8 DDR4 sticks. The DDR4 is going to be very important if you do choose to go with a different RAM. Uh, but this is going to be just kind of your standard run of the mill. It's going to be budget entry level, but it's going to be a little bit better than the minimum required specs. So keep that in mind. You can get cheaper, but this is probably, like I said, the best bang for your buck. If you want colored ones, wait for the next one. Next, we have a $60 solid state drive. It's got 500 gigabytes of storage. Now, the thing with the solid state drive is this is not meant 
to hold your, all your family photos. This is meant to hold just your program files, all your games or whatever, so that when you click it and you load it up, it loads that game up instantly and everything that is on that solid state drive runs smoothly. So you don't have to worry about your pictures running smoothly. So put that stuff on an external hard drive like I have over here. I also bought an extra internal hard drive that obviously I put all of my data and stuff on. So I would recommend that. But if this is your budget build, you can sacrifice that and go with a cloud storage. I would recommend Google Drive or something along those lines. Next is going to be the graphics card that I'm personally going to upgrade. And maybe if I don't, I'm going to get its new personal upgrade is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 270. Now this is the most expensive component of the PC, so don't be scared by the price. Like I said, it is more expensive than competing and going on the PS5. But if you're going to spend that money on the PS5, you might as well stay on the PS4 for a couple months, get that job and uh, build a PC so that way when you do end up spending money, you're spending your money wisely. And uh, this part is all really subject to your preferences, but I have an Nvidia or not an Nvidia. I have an NZXT H510 case over here. I have mine in black. Uh, right here, I just have it in white, but that is $70 and uh, obviously just a fully modular power supply. Nothing crazy. And obviously, if you need that Wi Fi, you got to get a Wi Fi adapter separate that's only going to run you about $40. It's going to be in the next build. So, leading us into the next build build we've got the upgraded edition this one is going to get you to those maximum frames that maximum capacity and it's going to allow you to stream at the same time without breaking the bank obviously this is something that you want to start out with if you do have a little bit more money but you are going to want to upgrade over time the point of this video is not to give you guys something to shoot for this is something to give you guys realistically to get into to get your foot into the pc master race so that way while you are working you can put more money into specific parts if you do want to upgrade your ram you can get more sticks if you do want to get a second graphics card you can do that whatever you want to do you can do it but this is like i said a realistic starting point that will cater directly to cold war so for the upgraded one we have a amd ryzen 7 3700x 3.6 gigahertz eight core processor coming in at $300. It is a little bit more expensive, obviously, than the last one, but it's worth it. Obviously, we got the same fan because I didn't feel a need to throw another one on there. It's all obviously subject to preference. I would recommend you get more fans, but this is, like I said, the budget entry level. This is all you really need. So if you're just trying to save your pennies, just go with this. Uh, and then we have the same motherboard that I personally have and would recommend. It looks pretty cool and it works like a charm and it's future proof. Next, we've got 32 gigabytes. That's going to be two 16 sticks of DDR4 RAM. And they got the pretty lights on there. As you know, I want, I don't personally have much going on in my computer now. I need to get it going. But uh, if you guys have any recommendations on what I should do with it, let me know. Uh, and then this is the solid state drive that I personally have is the Samsung 970 Evo. This is the one terabyte. I think it works great. It's $170 currently. And then next is the same graphics card. If you want to upgrade it, you can later on, but this is really just kind of what you need. Uh, and then next is obviously just the case and the power supply. And then like I said, the Wi-Fi adapter. Nothing too crazy with these builds. I didn't go crazy in depth because there's no real need to. There's nothing, nothing too complicated in this. Obviously, you're gonna need your monitor. I would personally recommend. So if you're looking at getting a monitor, it needs to be 144 hertz. It needs to be a one millisecond, preferably. And it should be obviously 1080. You're not gonna find anything at that standard lower. But if you do end up going the 4K route, it's all your personal preference it is going to obviously cost you more and your pc will most likely be able to run it mine can but i don't have a 4k monitor so i can't tell i just went and copped a little bit of an ultra wide monitor so 
I will make a review on that when it comes in but for now I currently just have one of the run of the mill Asus 144 Hertz one millisecond VG I think it's 248 E is the number code I'll put it on screen but they discontinued it because they came out with the new one so that's kind of irrelevant so any kind of peripherals that you'll need will come in a separate video and at a later time but this is like I said just the PC that you need to get your foot in the door you don't need a keyboard and mouse obviously you can get one to use on your computer you're gonna need it but you don't need to get some crazy light up one like I've got or um, spend hundred and twenty dollars on a mouse like I did I love it but um, I don't game so you know it's not for gaming I use an Astro C40 controller and a lot of people are looking for Xbox 360 controllers Xbox one controllers and pretty much anything you can use is all free reigns as long as it's a controller and not a keyboard and mouse so we're gonna see how that goes um, I'm very excited for the PC switch I know a lot of people are very scared about it I'm not too worried I know what kind of content that I'm looking forward to making and this only allows me to make more of the content that I actually really wanted to I didn't want to just kind of stick down the the personal development route that I was headed but I mean I want to uh, head down you know like I said more of the tips and tricks the guide way so that is gonna give me personally uh more of a direct path and i hope a lot of you as well so there will be a lot more content coming not only from my page but also the community i'm sounding like a bitch the community as well so like i said i'm super excited let me know what you guys think about the switch down in the comment section below there's tons of pros talking about this tons of vamps talking about this all you gotta do is check out on twitter and you will see everyone freaking out it is going crazy and i hope you guys are staying sane in this very very insane time hopefully you guys have a great day and i'm out peace